Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now in the last video I introduced you to the exciting new sponsor of the channel Go Comment. Now Go Comment makes it really easy to collect feedback on specific areas of your website in the same way that you can drop comments on a Figma file. It's really intuitive, really easy to navigate and it makes it also really easy for teams to collaborate. So if you're a development team or perhaps you want to work with your clients it's really easy to get people on board leaving comments on your site for you to iterate new versions. But it got me thinking, what with the rise of interest in freelance? What with the number of creators that have solo careers like myself? You know, what's the application for someone who works outside of a team? And it got me thinking that how many of us step back after we finish a project and leave feedback ourselves? How many of us criticize, not necessarily in a negative way, but also reflect on what we've done and iterate new version post-production? So I kind of thought today it could be really interesting for me to add go comment to my website again i'll show you how quick and easy it is just as i did in the last video and then from there i'll begin sort of from the very top of the home page all the way down to the bottom dropping some comments and leaving some feedback so i'm going to start this process of breaking down websites with my own so we're going to start with the hero section and the nav bar work our way through leaving some comments and i want to show you on the one hand how important a tool like go comment is for yeah sure if you're working with collaborators but also not only how good go comment is but how useful reflection and sort of you know reiterating on your own projects especially your own websites a designer can be so what we're going to do is sort of understand how important feedback for yourself can be and how you can use go comment to reflect on your own work and improve your own websites so without any further ado let's head into go comment we're going to set up a new site and get started. So here we are back in Go Comment. So just as we did last time, we're gonna start by adding a new project. We're gonna add some basic details, including the project name and the URL of the website. And then optionally, you can add the name of the client and a brief description of the project. We don't need to do this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press next. We're gonna to wanna to install the widget straight away. So let's click install widget now. And then where it says here, do it yourself, we're gonna copy this script. We're gonna go into our website and paste this within our head code. So if you're using Framer, here's how you do it. Let's come over to the Framer platform and let's come down into the page settings. So what we do, if you're on the sort of normal Framer interface, click on the settings wheel, and then you can either apply it to all pages by going to general, scrolling down and pasting it in the start of the head tag where it says custom code. Or if you want it on a specific page, navigate to that page. Again, start of head code where it says custom code, paste it in, click save and publish. So as you can see, that was really easy and we are done. So the next time we load up the website, as long as we're logged in to go comment, we'll be able to start interacting and leaving comments throughout the page. So really simple setup process. And let's see what it looks like now on the website itself. Okay, so I'm now logged in to go comment. I've installed the tag and I've just loaded up my website. And as you can see, Blending in with my color scheme in the bottom right hand side is Go Comments UI. So as you can see, exactly as we did last time, I'll just quickly talk you through what all of these do. So you can pop open the thread so you can see discussions and a really cool feature, by the way, worth mentioning. You can also attach files. So if you're collaborating with people and they say, could we switch up a logo or could we change an image? They can actually drop that here in Go Comment for you to access to make those iterations. So really, really handy tool. So open and close the threads. We've got show comments. We can find comments that we're mentioned in. We can also leave a comment. So we click this and we can start dropping a comment somewhere on the page. And we can also move the uh, UI from the left and the right hand side of the screen. My camera's there right now. So I'm gonna leave this on the right hand side and we're gonna get started. So how easy is this? Well, as I said, click leave comment and we can find an area of the website to drop a comment on. But I'm gonna go through and try and find something a bit more constructive than just showing you how the tool works. Let's have a moment of reflection on my own work and see how we could go about improving my website's design. So on the whole, after working with several clients and also seeing things on my own websites, I really liked opening a website with these sorts of banners, these clickable banners, just to highlight sort of the most recent or most important thing you're trying to promote. Um, so when it comes to mine, I kind of like this as the first way to open a website. Some people might put it underneath the nav bar, but I find it's the first thing that catches attention on mobile um, and as well on desktop. So I'm, I kind of like this as it is. That said, I am offering a huge discount to people who sign up early for my course and looking at this briefly, my hero section and that flash bar at the top don't mention that. So it could be a great place to lead with an incentive. So at the moment, there's not really a reason unless you're interested in Figma and you don't understand it at all, then sure you might go ahead and click, but I feel like it could do with some more incentive. So perhaps some um, 
form of social proof and maybe we can get some sort of review in there or maybe instead just something to talk about the offer. So I'm going to come down and make sure that I've select, uh, selected the comment tool. As you can see, mine's highlighted, so I'm ready to comment. I'm going to come up to the top and leave a comment. So what I'm going to say is add incentives, discounts, social proof. Now, if you're talking to a team member or if you're working collaboratively, I'd probably recommend a little bit more thorough wording than what I've gone for here. But I know this is for myself. I know that I'll understand what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the comment. And there you can see that comment's popped up at the top. If I come and open this up, we can see on the current page, we have something to discuss, add incentives, discounts, and social proof. So as easy as that, let's move down to the navigation bar. I kind of like how all of this is working. Part of me wants to see a little bit more interaction. I think we've got some really cool navigation bars in use nowadays where you hover over and you get expansive, really nice design menus. So while my current design is efficient and I think it works well for what people understand, I'd say it kind of lacks any real uh, show off, if you like, um, when it comes to design. And I feel like as a designer, I have, you know, the potential to do this, but also it's important that I show off my own skills. So I would say that I could add some interesting designs and some popovers with these items. For example, as you hover over templates, maybe it shows three or four different types of templates. As you hover over course, maybe it just shows you something like uh, get 75% off or, you know, something really important to kind of incentivize some more clicks. And the same with blog, we could hover over and have on the left hand side a call to action to come and see the whole blog on the right hand side, maybe two or three of the latest posts, whatever fits nicely in that space. But I just feel like something slightly more interactive with these um, sort of links in the middle. The button and the sort of main logo, absolutely fine. But I will just leave a comment here just to sort of say, add some form of interactivity such as pop over whoops menus you're going to see how terrible my typing is now pop over menus with interactive items leave comments so now we're going to move down to the hero section and on the whole i love how this fills the screen i feel like it looks great i feel like it advertises the course again i think something like social proof so just some profile pictures of people that have already signed up and are interested or maybe i can give a small sample of the course away to someone so they can start telling me how they feel about it and then collect some user um, generated sort of feedback from that. So social proof, even if it is just the number of users who have signed up, it's really helpful for people to see demand for things like courses or any product really. So that could be really helpful. And again, I'm just gonna add in here, add incentive, showcase discount for joining early. So now we've got another comment in. Another thing, I really like the design of this section. I like how it looks, but I wonder if there could be a little bit more animation. So I wonder if we leave a comment here and say, could these layers be separated from the background so they can be animated and move independently? So what I mean by that is Perhaps it could look great, especially as I was saying, if you're a designer, you want to show off your design skills. Could all four of these corner sections, let's see if I can move this quickly, could all four of these designs in each corner be kind of made into their own image that are kind of popped in so they can move freely. So as the mouse moves, perhaps they interact with the movement of the mouse or if we scroll or even just as the page loads, could we animate these in some way? So just to add some animation, gain some more attention and also... You know, as I say, with the incentives, this hero section should be a lot more effective. Things that work really well, you know, colors and imagery. We've also got a nice, big, bold heading. People find that the most easy to digest. Potentially could be improved if everything was left aligned. Um, and we could look into a solution there. But for this hero section in particular, I think this works okay. Okay, so coming down to this next section, I feel like it looks a little bit bland. I think these are important metrics. I do want to draw people's attention to the amount of companies around the world I've worked with, the number of reviews and recommendations I've had, and how long I've been doing this for. However, I currently feel this looks a bit bland. I feel like we've got the stats, but I feel like there's no imagery to illustrate what these stats refer to. For example, if there was a globe icon or illustration that was filling up 22%, just to show that actually this is the percentage of the world I've worked with, um, 
you know, recommendations, maybe something that symbolizes a review or a testimonial, perhaps a star, just something so that users can be not only drawn in, so something visual to gain attention, but also something to help them understand what this point refers to, just to make it so digestible really quickly. So I'm going to say section is a little bland Ooh. and could do with icons or illustrations. Leave comment. Perfect. Okay, great. So moving further down and we have the call to actions for clicking through onto a, a particular blog post. So the way I run my website is that every single video I do on YouTube, such as this one, I also create uh, a blog post for that particular topic. So you can always read through, see screenshots of examples, um, but also so that I'm growing in two ways. I think that's really important. So this is the blog section. This is where I kind of showcase, you know, what I put videos up on YouTube for, but also what I'm writing about. Um, and on the whole, in all honesty, I quite like what, I, what I've done with this particular section. I just think it's to the point. Um, and works well for what I need. There's three kind of recent things to look at. Um, you know, you could argue that a vertical um, layout, some people are saying, could be more beneficial because only one thing takes up the screen at a time. Definitely an argument in that. I'd say there's potential issues with the volume of text. I'd say that's quite a lot of text for people to read through. But on the whole, I'm quite happy with how this section looks. Um, and this is also feedback more related to each individual post, perhaps just shortening that brief description just a little bit, just so that it fits in here nicely. But on the whole, I'm really happy with this section. We've got the tags so that people can kind of get a gist of what the topic is. And then nice and easy, as you hover over, there's a bit of interaction. You can click through and view a blog post. So I'm going to kind of leave that section as it is. And again, load more. Rather than saying visit the blog, I've just put load more. I think people have this idea in their head that that's going to be a lot quicker. So they're going to click it more likely than something that says, you know, visit the blog. So I think I'm going to leave this section alone and then I'm going to come down to the next section, which I have plenty to say about. So I have decided to call my newsletter uh, the Creator Lounge, but I might be doing a slight U-turn on this decision. And if you've got any ideas on this, please do drop a comment and let me know how you feel. But I don't feel like this, uh, this section screams out to me as something interesting or, you know, what particularly I'm looking for as designer, you know, this doesn't scream, here's the newsletter sign up. So I feel like maybe instead of a call to action button, let's leave a comment, instead of a button, we could use a form to capture users much sooner. So make it as easy as possible for your users. You know, the more steps you put in their way, the less likely they are to take an action. So replace this button here with a, you know, a form so people can join straight away. You can still give them a learn more link underneath it all if they want to go through to the page where they find out more. Next thing I'm going to say is the heading. So the sizing is great. I like how much it takes out. I like how it stands out. But I would call it a little bit vague and not clear about the fact that it is, excuse me, it is a newsletter. So when someone arrives at this point on the website, I just personally don't feel like anything screams, this is an email marketing newsletter um, to get updates on design. You know, this isn't, this isn't, this section isn't screaming to me, sign up. And I feel like there's, this is something I could, you know, I, I'm offering something great with my newsletter. I'm offering the ability to share work with other people. Um, I'm offering content and tutorials, like I say, that I haven't got on the channel. Um, so it's definitely worth joining, but you you have to help your users understand that. And this section, in my opinion, still doesn't do that. There could be some imagery uh, relating to the, the kind of content inside. So I'm going to add that to imagery relating to the content itself to give users a reason to be interested. Really important. Next is this sort of list here. I'd say that list, in all honesty, looks a little bland could do with some illustrations and imagery maybe simple icons so this is just what i feel i feel like these lists items they're just looking a bit bland i feel like even a check mark next to each one just to draw some more attention might help just to understand that it's a feature but right now it just looks like some random text so a few things i'll change for that section Scrolling down, these are the templates. Again, exactly the same as the blog posts. I'm kind of happy with how this section looks. When you hover over, nice interaction to know you click through. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how that's looking. 
And honestly, same for this section. I don't think there's been much I'm going to say in the um, the kind of last part of the website. Uh, but here where it says helping digital brands grow online, we've got great social proof. Um, you know, perhaps above here, we could add a star rating to show even more social proof. And we've got the logos here to show the different companies I've worked for, but no call to action. So if this section sold someone, make it really easy to contact me. And let's leave that there. So that's what I would do to that section. Just a little bit more at the top, just to jump straight in with this section's about reviews. The you know, five stars above that would really help people to just sort of straight away go, oh, okay, this is what he's done. People like his work and these are the companies he's worked with. And again, if they've been sold on this section, they think this is great then I'd like them to be able to get in touch with me nice and easily. So just a little call to action button at the bottom uh, and that would really help. Coming down to where we've got this kind of grid, I'm really happy with how this looks. I don't think I'm going to leave any comments here. I changed the wording here from, um, as I mentioned above, I wasn't completely happy with Creator Lounge. Didn't think it was clear enough. So a nice, simple join the mailing list here. I thought that worked a lot better. And on the whole, I kind of like how this bento box sort of grid layout works. And I really don't think there's much I want to comment on. Something I might consider doing, I suppose you can see how when I hover over, if I just zoom in, the icon in the top right moves. I think potentially a little bit more interaction with the imagery on the Figma course and perhaps the templates. So I'm just going to leave a comment on the section as a whole and say add some movement to the background images on the Bento grid items for some added interaction on hover. And this is something, you know, that's been kind of proven to work really well. So when you've added um, some form of interaction to an element on your site that you click through to, a user's a lot more likely to be excited and interested. You've got their attention and they're more likely to click through. Basically, the more user interest you can retain, the longer they stay on your website and the more information they're gonna take in. So make it exciting for every part of your website to load and be interacted with. So that's the main thing here. So that's what I want to achieve with these kind of more interactive boxes. Finally, the footer, I'm kind of happy with how this works. We've got a newsletter button, I suppose that possibly um, a potential need for a newsletter form. But other than that, it kind of does the job. You've got your social media links so people can find you on other platforms. Um, I've got my sponsor link, but obviously that's not always going to be relevant. Uh, a nice bit of copyright information at the bottom. Might want to add that all rights are reserved. Not essential, but I'm going to do that now. That is not advice from me. So uh, make up your own decision and always seek uh, appropriate guidance on anything legal, frankly, when it comes to design work. It's really important to protect yourself. So I'm just going to add that to the footer. But on the whole, really happy. Nice, simple links. Um, you know, it doesn't complicate things too much. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I've gone through the whole site. And as you can see now, if we drop to the comments section on the right, uh, there's loads of stuff now added for me to work through. It's all in to discuss at the moment, but as I go through them one by one, you know, I can change the status to in progress. So as soon as I make a start, um, I can work through these. And yeah, I'm going to do all of this and in the next video, just quickly show you an update on the website. So I'm going to go through and try and make as many of these changes as possible, just so you can sort of see the difference that a moment of reflection on my own designs um, actually achieved from my own homepage. And I'll also discuss the effect of this, you know, if this has actually worked better in the long run um, and perhaps, you know, I've seen some more results. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found something useful in it. As always, comment below. Let me know what you thought. It's really important for me that you interact in some way with this video. You know, it really helps me out, um, you know, as a fellow creator. Please do like, please subscribe. Uh, it really does help. So anyway, back to the topic just briefly before we finish up. Um, just try this yourself with one of your projects over the next, say, week or two. Go ahead and sign up with uh, GoComment completely free to start an account. Um, add your website as a project, get started, and just let me know how you found it. But also, most importantly, remember that reflecting on your own designs in this way will help you just achieve that, you know, 110%, as I say, that extra 10%. You never know. It might be the difference for some people that use your website between conversion and leaving the site through boredom. So definitely give this a go. The importance of reflection on your own design work, even if all you do is leave the comments and take that sort of self-advice into your next project, then is really crucial. So I just wanted to show you today how GoComment can help us all as creators, even us on sort of solo careers like myself, um, but as well as the fact that it works great for development teams. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, I'll see you later.